The walls surrounding the City of London are some of the oldest and most important structures in the metropolis. Yet over the centuries they've become ruined and largely forgotten. But if you're prepared to look around, there's a surprising amount still to see. And that's what brought me to the city on a wet and gloomy December day. The walls date back to the Roman era. There were settlements in the area now called London as far back as the dawn of recorded history, and even further. I don't know how much further, no one bothered to record it. But London, as we know it, started out as a Roman trading port at some point in the mid-first century AD. While the Romans are, of course, famous for their roads, the fastest way to transport cargo was by ship. The first bridge across the Thames was built here, connecting with the roads to Camulodunum, what is now Colchester. This made it a convenient place to unload ships. At the time, Colchester was the capital of Britannia, but this new port, or Londinium as it was known, soon became a prosperous town. Now, if you're watching this video, and I have no reason to assume you aren't, you're almost certainly someone who likes to be informed. Or you're bored right now. Either way, Readly is perfect for you, and they happen to be today's sponsor. Readly is an app-based magazine subscription service that gives you access to over 5,000 titles on your phone and tablet for a single monthly fee. Now, you know I love me some model railways, but I don't love having a room full of magazines, so it's great that not only does Readly give me access to my favourites, but to back issues too. Ooh, minories. Magazines are organised by category, tell the app what you're into, and it'll find titles for you to discover. For example, I'd never read Narrowboat before I got Readly, but I do now. And, aha, this looks relevant to today's video, does it not? You can even download magazines to read offline, and your subscription gives you access for up to five accounts. If this sounds good to you, I've got even better news for viewers of this channel. Just follow the link in the description below to get two months of Readly for free, and then for £9.99 a month thereafter, and you can cancel at any time. I believe it was Juvenal who said all wish to possess knowledge, but few are willing to pay the price. Lucky for us that Readly have that offer, really, isn't it? Okay, let's hit the wall. By approximately 200 AD, the city was important and wealthy enough to need protection, and so a wall was built. This wall came to define the city for centuries to come, long after the Romans had aeunted Domus. The eastern end of the wall was used as the site of the Tower of London. When the tower was built in 1078, the walls would have been nearly 900 years old, yet they were still a vital part of the city's defences. This ruin here was the base of a medieval gatehouse. It's likely that there was a Roman gatehouse here before. Next, by Tower Hill Station, we come to one of the best preserved sections of the wall, with a statue of Emperor Trajan. The lower section is very definitely Roman in origin. The red brick courses are typical of Roman construction. The wall was built of Kentish ragstone, there being no stone native to London. The upper level is a little less neat, and is medieval. A little way further up, we can see some of the arrow slits preserved in the medieval wall. If anyone was going to sail up the Thames and start spoiling for a rumble, they'd be approaching from the east, so it makes sense to have fortifications on this side. While a lot of the wall is gone, there are other reminders of its existence. Like the name of this street a little further north, Crosswall. The next point where you can see the wall is rather peculiar. It's inside this office building here on Vine Street. I really want to know the story behind this. These days the wall is a scheduled monument, which means that if you try to knock it down you'd better have a good reason or a good undertaker. So here they just built the office block around it. You've got to admire the chutzpah. The next site of note is Aldgate. The walls weren't just about defence, they also enabled traffic coming in and out of the city to be controlled, very useful for trade. There were seven gates. Aldgate, Bishopsgate, Moorgate, Cripplegate, Aldersgate, Newgate and Ludgate. Aldgate was about here where this police booth is. No one knows exactly what Aldgate means, but the most popular suggestions are Oldgate, or that it's corrupted from Eastgate. And yes, I realise that East sounds nothing like Old. Old English is complicated. 
Aldgate's claim to fame is that Geoffrey Chaucer worked the gate as a customs official. There's another section preserved in the subway at Duke's Place, which you can't get to. However, there's a neighbouring street of interest. See, the wall wasn't just a wall. On the inner face, it was reinforced with a bank of earth, and on the outer face, there was a moat or ditch. The street of Houndsditch is a commemoration of that. The ditches were used for rubbish dumping, including, yes, some dead hounds. That is also commemorated in the name. Next we come to another gate, Bishop's Gate, commemorated by this mitre. The bishop in question was probably Irkenwald, a 7th century Bishop of London. This church, All Hallows on the Wall, dates from the 19th century, but is built, as its name suggests, on top of the old wall. And here, by the entrance, is some more medieval stonework. Now we come to the road known as London Wall, which, yes, takes its name from the wall. Sometimes this job is actually pretty easy. And here is Moorgate. Moorgate takes its name from Moor Fields, which was a marshy area outside the city. So, if you wanted to visit a marsh, you went through this gate. They had to make their own entertainment in those days. London Wall continues along here, but the name is deceptive. It sounds terribly ancient, but this part of the road was actually a post-war development, from an era when it was assumed that all these ancient streets would be swept away in favour of dual carriageways and concrete high-level walkways and all sorts of awfulness. Here's a ruined church which was St Alphage London Wall. It was bombed in both the First and Second World Wars, which seems like rotten luck, but it was actually the second St Alphage. The original was here, and built into the wall. The church was demolished in the 17th century, leaving the wall. What makes this bit of wall stand out is that it's Roman, then medieval, then on the top it has a section of brickwork dating from 1477 and the Wars of the Roses, which for non-British viewers were basically the real-life Game of Thrones, except instead of Lannister and Stark you had Lancaster and York, and I think people mostly kept their clothes on. And here's our next gate, Cripplegate. There are two theories behind the name of this. One is that it's fairly literal. The Church of St Giles is nearby, and Giles was the patron saint of, as we would say now, disabled people. The other is that the gate had low headroom, and should be Cripplegate, or a gate you had to creep under. St Giles Cripplegate is located in the Barbican Centre, as is this section of wall. This was actually buried until the Second World War, when it was exposed by bombing. It was incorporated into the Barbican Centre development, and includes a reconstructed section of ditch. This tower here marks the northwestern corner. Actually, the name Barbican comes from the walls. A Barbicana was a Latin word for a defensive fortification. There was a very substantial Roman fort here. But this bit of wall by the Museum of London doesn't look very Roman, or even very medieval. Most of the brickwork looks much more recent, and that's because it is. As the city expanded, the wall became less and less important as a defensive structure, and instead was used as the basis for other buildings. But as the older bits of wall fell into disrepair, they were replaced with new brickwork. So what we have here are the ruins of buildings from the 17th to the 19th century that follow the layout of the old fortifications. Although air raids in the 1940s ensured that these too would end up as ruins. The last above-ground visible section of wall is here, at Noble Street. Here you can see the bases of sentry towers. Noble Street is another of those sections of wall that were exposed by bombing, and unlike the bit in the Barbican Centre, it was never redeveloped. So not only is it a surviving bit of Roman wall, but it's also a rare example of a surviving bomb site. From here on, there's no more wall visible, although that's not to say there's nothing. There's Aldersgate, which I didn't get any footage of because I'm an idiot. This was likely Ealdred's Gate, or the Gate of Ealdrad. Who was Ealdrad? I don't know, but evidently his gate wasn't very memorable. Then there's Newgate. The mystery of the name is not what it means, it means... New Gate. But the real mystery is why it's called that, since it's actually one of the older gates. New Gate is probably most infamous for its prison, one of the most unpleasant and feared in the country. 
The prison closed in 1904, but its courtrooms were replaced with the Central Criminal Court, better known as the Old Bailey, which stand to this day. A bailey is a walled courtyard built as part of a defensive fortification, so yes, this is another name alluding to the wall. Ludgate is the last of the gates, Ludgate Hill being the road that leads up to St Paul's Cathedral. Nobody seems to be able to agree where the name comes from, but according to legend it's named after King Lud. Lud was the founder of the City of London and predates the Romans, and in many ways it's a shame he almost certainly didn't exist. So in conclusion, we have no idea where the name Ludgate comes from. At Blackfriars, we're back to the river, where both we and the City of London began. The walls continued along the riverfront back to our starting point, but they were knocked down by the Saxons after they got in the way. What I find fascinating about the walls is how much of an influence they still have on the city to this day, everything from the geography to the architecture to the street names. How often do we talk about the Barbican or the Old Bailey or Moorgate, and not even consider the fact that we're referencing something 18 centuries old? Well, I do hope you enjoyed today's video. If so, please do click the like button, and if you'd like more, click subscribe. I tend to update three times a week, so there's always plenty on the way. Thanks, as ever, to my donors on Ko-fi and Patreon. You are the medieval additions to my Roman fortifications. Thanks also to Readly for sponsoring this video. Follow the link in the description below to take advantage of their generous offer. All that remains is for me to say... That's wool, folks. <laughs>